What you're looking at is a project that I did recently. Um, and this is the sandbox and organic modeling session, or somewhat organic modeling session. Just going to say a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a landscape architect with over nine years of experience. I'm currently working at a firm in Denver called RNL, which is multidisciplinary. So we're doing architecture, master planning, urban design, interior design, uh, mechanical engineering. Um, I've developed a specialization over the years, just out of love, really, of working with SketchUp. Um, I've used it in a variety of different ways, and I've been fortunate enough to work on a lot of different projects using it. Um, I've been working with Google uh, off and on over the years since I live in Denver. Um, the sandbox tools I helped sort of consult, uh, gave the ideas. Uh, just out of show of hands, how many people use the sandbox tools here? Excellent. That's really good. Um, I'm also, and I have to put this in here because I told the publisher I would do this, I'm publishing a book next year on Wiley Publishing on SketchUp and landscape architecture. It's not going to be exclusive for just landscape architecture. I'll have items on architectural modeling, uh, large models, scene selections, and stuff like that. And I do go across the country sometimes and provide training for offices and firms. I use it for landscape architecture, as you can see in this plaza, um, for modeling uh, buildings. Uh, that, these are both buildings in Denver. The bottom one is the Denver Justice Center, which is being constructed right now. And we use this for master planning and urban, urban design. I have a lot of stuff that I want to go over, so we'll see if I can actually do all this. Now, a lot of people use SketchUp for digital elevation modeling. Um, and what that means is you get a DEM, you get this contour data from CAD, and in essence, you create a tin and you model from that. Uh, that's one way of working with them. I am not reviewing that today. Um, but I'll show you what I mean, if I can find it in this massive list of information. So this is a contour model that was brought in from AutoCAD, Land Development Desktop. You can see that it's just line work. They have Z elevations, so they're located in the vertical space. And what you do is you select it. And where's my sandbox tool? Just there they are. You can use from contours. And hopefully, they'll run on the bottom. You can see the progress bar. And it's going, which is pretty good. It's pretty fast using Simplify Contours. And it'll create a, a tin. So you have some elevation that you can work with. And again, I do work with these to create models. So here's that same elevation model. But it's now it's modeled with roads, ponds, a house. There's retaining walls. And in essence, the same techniques that I'm using today to show you sandbox tools can be used and are used pretty regularly on a model like this. Um, it's more like a digital elevation model is part of working with the sandbox tools. So that's what that does. And I'm going to close this out. Nope. So what exactly am I going to show you today? Well, you, if you saw the animations running, um, I'm going to show you a process in which I hope Mitchell Stengel isn't here, but I'm going to say it anyway. It, conceptual terrain modeling, which is what SketchUp is really about. It's a conceptual modeler. You want to go into SketchUp and you want to show people how you can conceptually represent an idea. If you're a landscape architect, it doesn't matter. Architect, you're never working with a flat site. Everything has elevation. It could be half a percent, it could be one percent, it could be 50 percent, it doesn't matter. So how do you actually go about doing that? I'm going to show you a couple of examples. I want to show this park in particular because I didn't do this model. Uh, one of the people that I'm working with, this really talented young man named Scott Anderson, um, I showed him how I work with the terrain modeling tools, and he went ahead and did it. Not only did he go ahead and do it, and it wasn't just for terrain, but we're going to review how you create really complex canopies. This is based off a conceptual design of tessellation. Um, using uh, MC Escher kind of qualities. It does have a specific design quality. And he used the sandbox tools to create these canopies. So what does that mean about the sandbox tools? They're not just for terrain. And I'm going to review how to actually use that to create some pretty complex canopies. Um, and that might be, I hope I don't lose people in that part, and I'll explain why, because it has to do with creating construction geometry. But you can see with this park, the whole thing is based and you can see the, the gentle grades, oh, instead of going in the tree. 
You know, there's grades that accompany this whole park. The same with this pocket park. And again, this was based off, there was a conceptual design to this. I'm not going to turn the trees on. But there's two things that should be noted about this park. One, there's grade all the way around it, throughout the park, but none of it was used creating or using any form of contour data. And then there's the canopies themselves. So if I move over, the idea with the canopies was that they're integrated with the design. So you can see the canopies and the terrain are meant to form together. So what I'm really showing by this is that you can really, as long as you can visualize it, you can create it with SketchUp in my mind. It's a matter of trying to problem solve SketchUp to get it to work for you using these tools. And there's, I'm not saying that this is the only way to do things. There's many ways to do it. Um, but I'm actually going to shy away from just saying that you're using uh, Ruby plugins to create these things. And I'll show you one other thing about this plaza, and it might be harder to see. But I'll put it right here. So if you notice that the plaza itself, along the ground plane where you see the eye, slopes downwards with steps that die into grade to create a 2% grade that goes into the landscape. Now, maybe that's a touch that most people won't notice, but the eye has a way of picking up all these things and these little details, and clients love it. When you're explaining it to them, well, this does work with grade, or it does work with ADA compliability. And the last example is this one called Dune Park. This one had a variety of features in it. We created a soccer field with canopies that had a stadium-like seating in it, again, using the sandbox tools. We had a canopy area with sandbox and sand, using the sandbox tools. Um, and again, you can start seeing these canopies and all this landform with these walls. And it's flowing and undulating. And again, none of this was done. All of this was done within SketchUp. And that's the idea of trying to convey that um, you can actually use all these tools relatively easily to do this. And all these models that you saw, they were modeled within, this one took two days because we were actually designing it while we were doing it, um, trying to think of the idea. And the reason why was because you can't convey this kind of terrain in AutoCAD or in a hand drawing. So we tried to figure out how can we do this in here. And that translated into the rest of our design process as well. Um, but it's, again, it's a, a quick process to, to get there. My favorite scene that the team created was this little water feature. And again, you can see the wall sloping in and around with these canopies again. And the canopies were actually based on real world designs by a company in Arizona called G.H. Bruce. And they do sculpted canopy designs. So we took their images, we actually consulted with them, we wanted to make sure we can get the structure and we actually built them in SketchUp. And these canopies took half an hour, 15 minutes to do. So how do you actually do this, now that I'm done showing off? Um, I'm gonna start first with uh, from, from scratch, smooth, and drape. So what does from scratch actually do? You create a grid, it gives you a spacing, it, create, it creates a group out of it, you can double click on it, and then you can use the smooth tool, and you can push and pull this surface. Well, how many surfaces do you see are in a grid when you're working on a project? Not many, if any at all. So you have to actually sculpt the land, you want to sculpt the form onto this, and that's very easy to do. So this is the area in my project model that I want to create some landform on. So I'm actually going to take this, I'm going to select it, and I'm going to copy it out. Control C, Control V. I'll bring it up and place it above this canopy, or above the grid. So the one thing about it is that you want to be able to cut out the form. And in order to do that, there's a couple of tools. And again, I, I can repeat these later in the lab if you lose me along the way, because this is a lot of information. But I just want to show the nature of what it can actually accomplish. I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to say, where is it? Soften smooth edges. I'll turn on the soften coplanar. Okay, so the next tool I'm going to use is drape. Now, no matter what you do, if you're working with the drape tool, 
save before you run the application. <laughs> the reason why is I've had more bug splats with that, and that's okay with it. It's actually the more complex the model you're actually trying to use drape on, the more likely that it might crash. Uh, but it's still a, a tool that I can't do without. So I'm gonna select the surface above the grid, and I'm gonna select drape. It lets me select the surface underneath it, and there it goes. So now I'm gonna delete this, and I'm gonna edit this grid. You can see that it created two separate grid faces. So I'm gonna delete this extra line work. Now you're saying, well, how do you push pull that? Hidden geometry. There's your grid. Now the problem with this grid is that it's too small for me to really sculpt. So the next tool I can use, which doesn't work perfectly on this, and I might actually have to recreate the grid, I'll admit that now, is add detail. Add detail will further triangulate all these triangles into further subdivisions that you can create a more refined um, mesh or landform with. And you can see it doesn't do it perfectly. You can see where the edges are, that it actually wasn't able to subdivide those edges because they weren't true triangles. Um, this actually might be too small for me to work with, so I'm actually gonna recreate this grid. Excuse me for one second. And the way you use this from scratch is right now you can see the grid spacing is at 25 feet. I'm gonna set it to 10 feet. Hopefully it's underneath. Whoa. There we go. And again, I'm gonna select the surface and I'll run drape. And then I'm gonna, oh, you know, I messed up. I did my own mistake here. I have to soften and smooth this first. There we go. And the hidden geometry is still on. And the one thing about the hidden geometry, I can't say it enough, I work with that constantly. I even have a shortcut for it. Um, because in a way, that's the best way to manipulate geometry in SketchUp because it's stuff, the stuff that you can't see, especially if you're working with cylinders or surfaces. Delete this. And again, we'll turn on the hidden geometry and you can see that now we have a grid on here. So I'm gonna, color, I'm gonna add some color to this grid and I'm gonna simply delete this and move this over. So I'll catch a corner and I'll place it in there. So now I have this gridded mesh sitting in what my landscape area might be. I'm gonna double click and edit it, and I'm gonna use the Smooth tool. Now the Smooth tool does take time and some understanding to use. When I first started using, using it, it's got a lot of functionality to, functionality to it in the way that it starts accessing and moving lines. So it does take some time and some practice to use, but I'm simply gonna just, you know, start pushing and pulling and the thing is about it, just to show you something, like people use it and it creates this really irregular shapes, like that's not terrain. What you can do is if I select this area and then I move to the next halfway point and double click, it's automatically raising it to the same level. So in that way you can create ditches, you can create whatever kind of berming or landform that you want that has a more consistent feeling to it, or you can push it down. You can also push it up to meet this wall, and even though it looks like the edge over there, that it's going above the edges. In reality, all I have to do is make the circle a bit smaller, we'll say five feet. I'm gonna select this corner, I'm gonna push it down. Actually, maybe 10 feet would be better. And you can see that how I'm using I'm changing the diameter of the smooth tool as I'm moving around with it. Oop. One of these turns it off. But you can start creating landforms. So that's one way of starting to create landform. It's not as precise, but there's definitely more precise ways to do that, and that's what I'm gonna get into next. Any questions so far? And I'll take a couple, because I don't wanna, go ahead. Yes, you can. Um, I've actually had some problems working with that lately, um, but let's see if that works. So you can select it, and we'll move it 15 feet. Yeah, what it's doing is it changed the, it changed the circle. So I don't know if I'm doing it wrong in the process, but you can actually set the heights and elevations. As landscape contractor, how do you put that out to CAD? I'll talk about that at the end. How small can the 
the grid be? I mean, <laughs> can I do carvings in, in woodworking? Yes, you can make the grid as small as you want. At some point, though, it has to be a very small area because you're adding so much. Even if it's a flat plane, SketchUp is still reading that as all these little separate faces, which adds a lot of memory use. But you can. And since you might be working with a wood carving that, what, 5 feet, 10 feet? Oh, no, I'm talking 3 inches long. Of wood you, uh, there might be a limitation with that, because I know SketchUp goes down to a quarter inch limit. But mm -hmm. we, can, I can, we can try that and show that later. So the next tool I'm going to talk about is from Contour. This tool is invaluable. I don't know if Tyler Miller's here, but he's a genius when he created this tool. For all intents and purposes, the From Contour tool is kind of a, a hack version of an organic modeling tool. And I don't mean that in a bad way. It, it's, it's so versatile, I, I use it in almost all the models that I create. And I'm going to show you a simple example. I'm going to simply create some arcs using the arc tool. And the arc tool is something that you, you're going to see me use a lot right now. And let me explain how it works. The arc tool requires three points for you to find. The beginning, the end, and the midpoint. And it's the midpoint that's important is because it's the midpoint that lets you define its place in space. And I'm going to get into that in more detail. But for right now, I'm just going to simply start drawing a grid, uh, lines on the surface. You can see that the, the line itself is uh, cyan, which means that it's tangent. So it's tangent to the adjacent arc, which is great, because that's what you want it to do. Another tangent line. I'm just going to end this right here. And then I'm going to select these lines. And then I'm going to go to the edge of my path, and I'm going to select the edge of the path lines. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. You can see that it's just created this little outline. Well, what am I going to do with that? I'm simply going to run from contours. Now, I do have to clean up the geometry because it did create some extra line work. So again, you turn on the hidden geometry. You edit the group, you use the eraser tool. And because you have a definition of that edge of that curve and that space in that path, you can clean this right up to the point that you need it. It doesn't leave any kind of remnants. You can clean it up um, to the precision that you want. I'm not going to go and clean the whole thing up because I'll be here for a while, but um, I think you get the idea. But that's one way of creating a curved landscape. Let's go on to the next example. So here you have, and I just want to emphasize this, three levels. You know, Because you're seeing me create these layers of landform and landscape, and how does it work. And it, it, this is repetitious, but I'll, you know, again, repetition is always good. You select the edges. I already have the drawn marks on the lines. So how does this work if you're an architect? Architects can, and I'm going to show an example, you can draw the demarcations of the landform on the building surface, then attach it to the grade. And I'm even going to show you in the next example how to create a path out of that. Again, we'll connect these lines. And they don't have to be these arcs that are going up and down. There's a lot of different variety to the way that you can actually create all these forms. Um, it really does come to the idea that I think a lot of people have to realize about SketchUp you have to realize, you have to see in your head what you're going to model before you get there sometimes. And that's good because you're training yourself to think in 3D. I'm not going to clean up those lines, and I'm just going to select this wall edge. I have this longer set of arcs. Oh. And now what you have is just a series of retaining walls, landscapes, and paths. And that will take me to the third example. This one's a bit more complex because I'm going to start talking about construction geometry. Now, whether you're new or not to SketchUp, whether you've done any 3D modeling, I've never have until I touch SketchUp. Construction geometry is the more complex way of creating a more complex form, for lack of a better term. Uh, and it does have to do with the fact that you need to visualize a little bit what you're actually going to create. So for this particular plaza, which you saw before, it was a series of berms and geometry that aren't touching on the ground for some reason, but that you know, create this plaza that's encased. Or creating a psychological immersion is what we told the client, and they bought into it, thankfully. <laughs> 
So the way to do that, and I'm going to show this simple example, and this isn't perfect, but I just want to get the, the concept of it out, because this does take some finesse. I've drawn a series of arcs on this ground plane, and there's a vertical line that's a marker. Get used to seeing this vertical line, because this is the way you start positioning construction geometry in space. I'm going to select these lines, and hopefully it'll let me do it without, actually let me do this. Lock it. I just learned that in the large modeling class. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to move copy these lines up in space. I'm actually going to go delete these. I, I know there's more than one ways to do this. But I'm really going to essentially, right now, I'm going to create a landform, hopefully, based off of these drawn contour lines. I'm just going to move them down. And bear with me, I hate silences. I always have to keep talking in some form, but. Something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I moved these over in the wrong way. So let me go back and do that again. Do you have any Led Zeppelin, Stairway to Heaven, Freebird? Sorry. And again, you're watching me do this right here, so you know it's, well, why is it doing that? This is why you want to make sure that you're actually using the guides that you're creating. Okay. Unlock, explode. So now I'm going to select all these lines. I'm going to select the edge of the boundary. And what am I going to do from contour? You know, and you can adjust this. It's a group, so I can move it up and down. But that's a very simple and another way of thinking of how to create these landforms. And again, it's not using a DEM. You're doing the work in your concept model, but you're already modeling it. How is this really different from push-pulling or doing all the other work? It just seems like more conceptually challenging, maybe because it's organic, it's rounded. The one thing when I started using the From Contour tool, I always would guess, well, what is it going to look like when I press the button? And over time, you start knowing what it's going to start looking like. You have an idea of what it's going to start creating. It's a very versatile tool. So I'm going to keep going. And the next one is not that one. Aha. So a lot of architects, landscape architects, civil engineers, you have the finished floor elevation of the building, and then you have the landscape. And we all know landscape architects and architects, it's oil, oil and vinegar, or whatever it might be. But I'm just kidding to all the architects. I work with a lot of them. Um, so I do have a finished floor elevation. And my site plan does have a path leading up to this entrance. And there's a couple of different ways I can do this. I can just model this plane, make it a group, and just rotate it up to the door, maybe. That's one way of doing it. But that's not as much fun. So I have a series of arcs along this edge. And in the middle point, the midpoint of the arcs and at the tangencies, you can see that I've put these horizontal lines on the ground. And this is the harder part, is how do you create a curved arcing line with arcs? How do you find the 3D space? Well, I know where my final destination is. It's that front doorway right there. Is that right? So. Actually, I'm going to take one of these lines. That's my highest elevation. And I'm going to copy it. I'm going to copy it to all these points. This does take a little bit of guesswork with what I'm going to show you next in this. But in essence, what I have right there is starting of a framework or a wireframe that I can start attaching the arc tool. So the arc tool, like I said, has three points. So I'm going to use the arc tool. I'm going to start from the bottom point at that corner. And I'm going to go to some place along this line, let's say right there. So there I have the arc. I can move it. I can put it in space. We all have done this before. Like, well, what do I do with this third point? Well, I'm going to place it someplace along this line. Now, it's not going to attach to it completely. 
but that's okay for what I'm doing. I just want to make sure that this point, and it is, is high, is lower than that point for the sake of this example. In some places you might not want to do that. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to attach it to the endpoint path. I'm going to put it here. And you can see that I've created a construction geometry line for this path in vertical space. Well, how do I get it across the other side? Maybe I can offset it, you know, I haven't, I, but it won't let me do that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these horizontal lines, and I told you this wasn't simple, but it's not complex. It's just a matter of thinking your way through of how you want to create something with a, with a cage. And I'm going to bring it up, I'm going to start copying it to the relative intersection. I can't guarantee you that it always is touching that line. As you can see right there. And then I'm going to redraw that arc. And this time it's a lot simpler because I have an endpoint. You can see it filled in the space. So what do I have there? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not, it doesn't always attach to it perfectly. But you can see that I have this rib or this vertical spine or sloping walk. So what am I going to do? They're selected. I'm going to use, actually before I do that, I do want to erase these lines. I don't need them anymore. I'm going to reselect the arcs. Then I'll use from contour and I created a walk. I'm going to turn the hidden geometry on. I'm going to edit this out. Oops. But you know, the only problem with that is that you walk up this thing, you fall off, and you have a great lawsuit. <laughs> and no one's going to build that anyway. So what are we going to do with the rest of this? It's simple. For the sake of this example, I'm just going to keep it very simple. I'm just going to select the corners. I do need to edit this out also because it did create some more geometry. And that's the one thing. From Contour will create additional geometry. It's not intelligent enough to know what exactly what you're asking it, but it's simple enough that you can go back and delete all these lines. But now you have a curved sloping walk up to the building entrance. And then on top, I have my trees, my vegetation, my people. I'm going to show you one Ruby script that's great for terrain modeling. These are all groups of components. I'm going to right click on them. And someplace in this menu, I have drop at intersection. And it all drops them onto the location of the modeling. So that's one example. Now I'm going to show you something that's, oh, go ahead. I actually am. Uh, I have a friend who's disabled, so I, I'm always cognizant of the fact that he has to get to and from. I, I definitely try to think about the elevations I'm doing from uh, a building entry up to a walk or stairs or whatever it is. But it's relatively simple because it's just rise over run, and you can measure those distances. So, do you do that? Do you do that? yeah, if you know the building finish floor elevation and you know your your grade you're attaching it to, you can figure that out. I am. I, exactly. This, I'm actually, I'm not grading in CAD. I'm not grading by hand. I'm grading in 3D. Um, so I'm going to show you this example. So here's a, uh, a trail going up to someplace on top of this mountain. And what I did is I have a 2D, I had the 2D trail on the ground, and I placed all these construction lines. Yeah, it's probably a bit OCD, but... <laughs> I don't think I had anything to do that day. Um, so what you do with that, and I'll show you what, is I eventually created this. And again, I was measuring grades. I was making sure that I didn't go above 8% in some of these uh, switchbacks. And what it ends up looking like, we're using the sandbox tool, is that. So you have it. But this would 
be great just to show you is the final product, but I did continue working. <laughs> and this is what you eventually got, a trail leading up the side of a mountain, which was something I always wanted to try and figure out for SketchUp and placing all the trees as well. The trees were placed in AutoCAD, brought on the file. They were replaced like I showed in the AutoCAD session where you just replace the components and you drop them onto the terrain using the Ruby script. Oh, actually, I'm lying. I placed them individually. <laughs> So before I go on to the next part of this, any questions? Yes. I do your grade. How do you calculate that? I do it in both in CAD and by hand, and then I go in and I measure it in SketchUp. So I know before I start attaching the endpoints where they have to be. I worked on the uh, Marine Memorial in Quantico, Virginia, in which we used the trail system and switchbacks, and we had to figure that out before we put in the trails. Um, we mathematically measure all the grades. Yes, go ahead. On the previous uh, model where you had the building, had you wanted to keep a level area against the building where you weren't tapering between, two, if you will, parallel for lack of a better term, edges, would you then do that as a first stage and then cut it, remove some of the triangles, get a new line against the building, and have from contours again? So if you're talking about like right around here, yeah. I would simply draw my lines in. Basically, and let me emphasize this, I'm using all these construction lines, these lines to guide where from contour is going to start creating its grades. So it's a bit more level. And again, I can create a much more complex shape around that if I have to. Um, but the point of it being is that it's all in the matter of what you're trying to build around it and how you want to build it using those lines. And you can create the reference lines. You saw what I did with the trails for both of those to create reference lines and where, where to place everything. Go ahead. So I have two questions for that. First one is, are you using it from a DEM and then using from contour? Uh, sometimes it's from, yeah, no, kind of um, there, there might be a bug in the way that works. Um, but you, I might have to talk with you after, because I'm not sure. The other thing is, is from contours, if there's lines that are stacked vertically above each other, it will not generate faces. It'll do it in any other direction except the vertical. Um, so if you do have any contours that are stacked up, like a retaining wall in grade that goes up and down, it will not generate a face. Go ahead. Are there any uh, kind of build quantity um, Ruby scripts? I think there is. No? Don't know. Um, I know that there's a program called Simuterra that was compatible with SketchUp 5. I think it's compatible with SketchUp 6. Um, Ares who works with ESRI now, actually did it so you can export these out um, and actually take cut and fill calculations. And to answer the question about how, so you generate all these grades, how do you put this in the CAD? Land development desktop, Civil 3D, you can bring in terrain um, and actually tell it to generate contours for you at intervals and create lines. I actually was hoping to talk to Todd about maybe a Ruby script that allows you to do it in SketchUp, but we'll see. But that would be the way to do it as far as exporting these out. Because I do export these out into AutoCAD. Um, and then once you're in land development desktop, you can place the lines. It'll generate, uh, it'll generate contour data for you. And if you're tying into existing grades, you can start creating conceptual grading this way. Go ahead. I'm not entirely following the question, I apologize, but if you, if you talk with me later and... Uh, are you talking about actually painting the individual faces? Yeah, well, it's actually got a clip on it, so I just wanted to find the clip rock and rock. So, yeah, painting the face. If you turn the hidden geometry on, these are individual faces, but and that's one way of doing it. I was going to show this other tool, and it... And this is the new Ruby script that I got introduced to while I was here. So I did get something out of coming here. 
Just kidding, just kidding. Um, but allows you to draw on surfaces. This is amazing because now you can draw in a path and it's cutting the face. So I can paint this individual face. So if you turn the hidden geometry on on your model, it actually should allow you to paint those individual faces on that cliff. Does that help? Okay. okay. Um, any surface operation or tools on surface? It, for what I'm doing, this is a must, because I was going to show a different way of doing this, and I saw this, I was like, that's irrelevant, because my way would have taken another 10 minutes to do. Um, I'm going to continue. I want to go on to the next part of this. I apologize in advance if I don't get this to work perfectly, but I will try. Um, I have a 5x5 five five simple grid. The end result, and I, I'm going to tell you to close your eyes for a second, but there it goes, is to create this canopy. You can see the guy standing there. That's either Tyson or Bryce, I'm not really sure. I'm just kidding. So how do you create something like that? And again, that has to do with the hidden, using offsets, hidden geometry, um, and construction geometry. So I'm simply going to offset, use the offset tool, I'm going to offset this three inches. And basically, you're just going to show, I'm just going to watch you how I'm constructing this. And again, this has to do with visualizing the process. And I'm actually going to add more construction geometry than I need to do this. But that's OK. It's the idea of showing that you can lay this all down using reference points. And the biggest problem is always using arcs and finding the third point for that arc. So I'm going to simply place an arc all around all four sides. I'm going to delete the subdivided face. And again, everything I'm doing is really a matter of creating points of intersection and points that I can start referencing the geometry. At the center line here, I'm going to create a one foot on blue axis, one foot line. And at the midpoints here, I'm going to create another three inch line. I'm going to copy that around. And again, I'm being redundant with the way I'm doing this. but gets the point across. So what I'm doing right there is creating a wireframe cage for the, for, the, for the arcs. So the arcs are going corner, corner, point one, point two, and point three at the top of that blue line, if you can see that. Point one and point two at the top of this blue line. And then again, point one and point two, and then point three. And what it's doing is it's located all these arcs in space. I'm actually going to delete this so it's all out of the way. So you can see you have a wireframe that show that oh, that's showing part of that canopy. You can see the line work for that. So what am I going to do again? I'm going to use from contour, and it generated the surface. Now the thing is no. Umbrella is good without the canopy support. So I'm going to create a little circle, quarter inch circle, at the base of this. It's flat. And then I'm going to select the line work that composed the frame. I'm going to use the Follow Me tool if I have it anywhere on here. There it is. And what I've created is piping, in essence, along the canopy. And the next part is the part I always get myself in trouble with, and I'm not sure why. But I'm going to take, I'm going to select all this line work. I'm going to make it a component. And then I'm going to just do a rotate copy, and this is where I get myself in trouble. Select point one, and again, this is why I have all the reference line. Point two, see, I don't know why it does that, but there it goes. And then I'll do 3x. It worked. And you have a canopy. So why am I showing canopies? They tend to be, I always look at Santiago Calatrava or all these canopy designers. I'm like, how do you do that in SketchUp? Because if you can do that, then in my mind, you can probably do anything that you want to do with it. So I'm going to show you a much more complex example just to make that point. 
So this is a canopy based off of, like I said, G.H. Bruce Designs in Arizona. And it's like, well, hell, can you do that? Especially for landscape architecture. And the thing is, is I've also used this to create complex forms and geometry on buildings. Um, working on the Denver Justice Center, had a cantilevered wall, glass wall, that was curved and pulling forward. And we used the same method to create this glass wall and then drape to create the lines on it. And if you want, I can show you that separately. Um, but it, this is not just for landscape architecture. It's really to show that, again, you have, a wide, you have a wide variety of tools that you can create any kind of shapes that you want. So how do you go about a shape like this? So it's the same thing. This is really the canopy. This is what it looks like. Those curves, you take the curves of that canopy, you plant it on the ground, you drape it on the ground, or you visualize it, and it's all these separate arcs. I once again, I take the highest elevation that I'm going to, whatever this was, 30, 35 feet, and I place a vertical line at the intersection. You can see that it broke up the line of each point. And then I start connecting lines. I'm going to show you how I did that. So arc tool, I'm going to go from the end point to the top of this line. I'm going to select a portion on this midpoint. And I'm going to do the same thing going around the model. I'm not going to go all the way to the top of the next line because I'm trying to visualize what the form might be. And this one goes down. And by connecting and stringing all the lines, I'm getting an idea of where they all belong in space. But the final, the form of this Oops, missing one. You can see the outline of this shape. It's just a simple wireframe. Now, the one thing that's missing is the spine in the middle. But again, you go back to your 2D base plane. And let me emphasize that. All I'm really doing when I'm drawing these lines is I'm using the horizontal plane as my reference points. Horizontal plane with one or two or three vertical lines to snap all these points. And that way, again, you're just creating a simple wireframe. So the simple wireframe needed a spine in the middle. So there's that line going across from the midpoint, from the end of that back line to the front. I create another line in the middle. And then there you have it. I've created the spine for it. And I'm going to copy this out, I think. There you have the spine. And then I'm going to simply run from contours again. I'm going to edit it out. And again, you can do a piping along path, place a color on it. That didn't take so long. But there you have a canopy. Questions? <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um, I think so. I actually didn't try it that way, to be honest with you. But let's see what that does. Now, what do these tools have to do with digital elevation modeling? So let's try that. Yeah? It's, it, it, the, one of the things that I, when I, sh I took these designs and I showed them to the designer, they said the canopy won't actually f flow that way. You need to add some support here and here. They got very detailed. They gave me detailed red lines of my SketchUp images to say, no, do it this way versus this way. I was like, OK, OK. Um, and then they told me that they didn't want me to design them. <laughs> um, go ahead. I'm sorry? You can now. And I'm not sure I'm going to do this correctly, but the, there's, um, oh, I closed the tools. 
thickness. Giving thickness to the canopy. Um, that's right. Let me, let me think about that. Let me show one more thing. There's another quick way to create canopies. I'm going to create a simple cube. I'm going to push pull it. I'm going to use the arc tool. And again, because it's looking for a third point, the third point here is just simply on surface. I'm going to go around the model. I'm going to make sure the lines are connected. What I should have done actually before I did this was make this a, a group or a component so I could delete this clean, much more cleanly. But this is the quick and dirty method of doing the same thing I just did. But there you go. It's another canopy. And that, was, that took me 30 seconds. And there are ways to control that. It's just by creating the wireframes, you have much more control of what the shape ultimately looks like. Um, and as far as thickness, there is a way. There's a, another set of Ruby scripts like, that I saw today while we are here that would allow you to do that. Um, but joint push-pull. Push Thank you very much. Questions? Wow. I have finished early, so if you have anything, come on. Is it possible to do contiguous if you had, uh, if you continued the arc and you were able to do individual patches of four, so if you had a really complex shape, like two curves that go in, but they curve around the other side and have two cylinders, you could do things like that. Is that, would that be possible with patching or does it go to the line? Yes, you should. It, from contours, again, it'll create any faces as long as you're telling it where those faces are supposed to be. Um, do you guys want to see another example? Give me one second. <laughs> nice. And by the way, I want to say thank you to Michael for helping us. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So here you have this little plaza. This is at University of Northern Colorado. And hopefully we'll get this right. We'll see. I'm going to approximate it. But obviously, again, lawsuit-wise, you're standing here. Someone's drunk, especially on a campus. Walks across. Mommy and daddy are happy because they don't have to pay for uh, financial aid anymore. <laughs> so how do you create? It's the same thing. How do you create just a very gentle slope on this? So I'm simply going to use the line tool. Or actually, I can use the draw line on surface tool and go from here. Ooh, that's great. Actually, it's not entirely doing it, though. Hmm, OK, maybe we shouldn't experiment. <laughs> I'm going to use the arc tool. Actually, where do I want to start this? You can see that there's one remnant of that line already there. And go from here to here. Go from here. Here, and from here. And this line's going to disappear. And again, once I figure out how to use, oh, it's still there. Um, and the other thing is, I also wanted to meet the grade at the back of this wall. So I'm actually going to just take this line. I guess there's another way for me to do this. But I'm going to show this, because this, this is another way to work with geometry, is using the reference geometry you already have. There's, I could have done this differently, but I selected all those. I'm going to use the move copy. Control and Alt, and just copy it down. And I've created that line as a reference point. OK. Huh. I don't, would that alter the way the shape of the plaza if I do it that way? Gotcha. OK, that makes sense. Oop, I shouldn't have unselected this. So again, I'm just going to select this. And you already, if you've been following me, I hope you understand what it is exactly that's going to be created from this. Because all I'm really doing is telling SketchUp where exactly I want all these lines to go.
And the biggest thing I can do wrong here right now is miss a selection. <laughs> Okay, so we'll look at that, and I think you can see that. And you're basically just telling it to create an irregular surface. And that's graded. And again, based off all the elevation points, six inch steps, whatever it might be at the end, you have a very slight surface. And again, and the eye notices it. If someone's standing here, People will see it. Go ahead. Two questions. Can you tell can you tell how much of a grade you'd like if you'd like a two percent or a three percent grade? You have to you have to measure that out before you do it. So if I know it's if I know a three percent grade has to be attached to a two foot vertical construction line or a three foot construction line, then I measure it out. And that's easy enough to do by just placing the lines and start measuring it. So yeah, if you you're gonna have a plan of it, you're gonna have it in CAD, and you want the grades to be precise, you just measure it out before you place them. Second question? Second question. If you have time, can you show us how you work best from getting your contours and bringing them into SketchUp? As far as having a DEM model? Digital elevation model. Um, I do, you have any I do um, but it would take me some time to. Again, we can. <laughs> exactly. Sorry. Go ahead. The other direction. What do you mean? From this, is it just you just export this as an AutoCAD DW, DW yes. to generate, and then use AutoCAD to generate your contour? Or land development desktop or Civil 3D. Um, AutoCAD doesn't have that capability as far as I know. And maybe there'll be a Ruby script that Todd might write for it. I'm just kidding. You did some uh, really beautiful stuff with first order curves, simple arcs, and maybe the reason those canvas guys were mad at you is they probably call us catenaries, like second degree curves. Do you miss higher order curves, base lines, that sort of thing? Or, I mean, you're doing beautiful work. And Thank you. The conceptualization, I think, is perfect. You know, I, I'm never intimidated with working with a high poly model because of the ways you, you, you have to manage your models when you're doing this anyway. So I'll go and set my arcs to, you know, 60, 70, 80 arcs to try to create a much more smoother um, arc. But that does, keep in mind, if you do that, from contour will generate a space or a line from every single vertices on that line. So that does make it a lot more... Uh, tangible, uh, higher count, but yeah. Uh, is there a way to, like, <clears throat> I saw a script yesterday that was just a number, and you can just click and do numbers. Is there, is there anything out there where you can do, like, spot elevations, and you can set this up at a relative elevation, and then just go and click and start picking up spots? The only way that I've done that is in CAD. Um, and I had me and someone else because I'm not familiar with using 3D CAD, uh, 3D uh, options in CAD, but we did do it that way. We built some of the wireframes there first. But no, that I can't think of anything of a Ruby script that might do it. Yes. Another thing I was going to say that I've generated contours from from your regular surface models before, where you set up a stack of planes mm -hmm. as a group and then intersect them with your topography and then delete everything and you left with those contours. You can pull back in CAD. Go ahead. There's a Ruby script called No Camera Point. Huh. We could have one no time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be a busy oh, man by the time you, you get back to Texas. Easy one. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Let's talk about the order of operations. When I'm doing a landscape plan and I need to change contours or I need to change retaining wall or something, I never know which thing I should do first. If I should the simplest way, there's, I'm very, a very big proponent of uh, workflow and process. And that, that's come from working and being the grunt and doing plans um, and then trying to translate that into CAD. So I, the specific, I might not be able to answer you specifically for what your situation is, but the way that I, I do it typically is, if I'm starting from AutoCAD, and I, this was part of the presentation for uh, uh, the AutoCAD to SketchUp presentation, I'll start with the horizontal plane first. So any kind of landscape area, walls, steps, uh, roads, 
Those are the first things that get delineated as a 2D flat plane. Then you go in and then you articulate it, you add color to it, um, and then everything else gets articulated. The last thing that I typically do in these models is actually generate any contours. It's because once you put them in there, they tend to interfere with anything else you're trying to do. And it's easier to connect them to stuff that's already existing that's much more straightforward um, models than uh, the other items that you'll find. Does that help a little? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Do you know if anyone has ever taken a SketchUp model and imported it into the construction equipment GPS to grade a site? Uh, Don't know. My hope is, is that what happens with this eventually, with, with all, everything that people are doing in SketchUp, that it does translate out of just being something that's conceptual and gets into more something that can get constructed. Um, if you saw what Mitchell Stangle was doing, you know, it, that's really the, the beginning of the process of trying to standardize what we're doing for construction. Because in, I've done this on more than one project where I'm taking snapshots just to convey to the contractor. They just need to see how the pieces go together and understand it, and that makes it a lot better. So it, what I do is I'll take a, a snapshot of, Auto, in, of SketchUp um, as an AutoCAD 2D, place it in, into CAD, and then label it, and that gives them the idea. Um, but hopefully that's where it's going to go, hopefully. Go ahead. Sorry, I do <laughs> have a Ruby script. It's called Text Label Override. And if it doesn't do the Z axis information, it will in just a few days. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Thank you very much.